When you have a graph where two of the vertices have an odd degree, you know that one of them has to be the start, let's say A here, and the other has to be the end. And that's a very useful idea in graph theory. And, and part of the reason for what, as to why this makes sense to me is that if you think about the really simple case where we leave A and then you know, hit maybe one or two, two vertices and then come back to B, since we have a path here, right, um, and since there are two vertices of odd degree, A is the start and B is the end. That makes sense because there's only one edge leaving A and one edge coming to B. So how could it be any other way, right? You have to leave A and end at B. So A and B have to be the start and end. But what about um, other, other odd degrees, right? Having a degree of 1 is not very challenging because you just have to leave the beginning and come back to the end. Well, when A is, let's say, something like, like 3, and B is, I don't know, 5. If we think about uh, what this graph might look like, we don't know what's in the box in the middle, right? We don't even know what, what this graph is. But we know that A and B are, are both odd. So how do we know that they represent the start and end of the graph? Well, let's think about what might happen. To start the graph, you might leave A. And you can work your way through the graph, and maybe you come to B. Well, then you have to leave B. Go through the graph, come back to A. All right, and now you have to leave A again because there's still some unfinished edges. So A cannot be the end. All right, we started at A, that was our start. And it can't be the end because we have to leave it. And then we work our way through the graph, and we come to B. We leave B again, because we want to hit the rest of the edges, and now notice how this, we're back to the situation again with only one edge going to B. So we travel our way through the graph, who knows what, what vertices and edges are in there, but there, we eventually have to come back to B and finish the graph, so that has to be the end. Well then you say, well what if you started somewhere in the middle? What if you didn't make A or B your starting point? How do you know that that, that wouldn't work? Okay, well, let's try this again. Let's just even do it with a smaller case. If A is 3, has a degree of 3, and B has a degree of 3. Why would it would be wrong to start in the middle? Why would you get stuck? Well, let's say we start somewhere in the middle. Well, that means we have to leave the middle and maybe come over to A, and then leave A. And then we will work our way over to B because we want to include these edges, and then we leave B. Well, now look what happens. There are two edges left. And maybe more in the middle, right? There has to be some edges in here that we have to travel across. But either way, we could cross the bridge to A, or the edge to A, and then we would be stuck because we used up all the edges going to A. Or we could use the edge going to B, but we couldn't get off B because we've used all the edges going to B. So if we don't start at A or B, we get stuck. We can't complete the circuit or graph. So in order for it to work, in order for this, this graph to actually make sense, B or A has to be the start or end. And that's the simple idea of having two odd degree vertices.